this is called banana flour. Most Vietnamese restaurants in New York do not carry this, and it's a really hard item to find. And this is the only place in New York that I've actually found that actually has it, so pretty stoked about this. The pineapple is a good ingredient to use in Bung Ba Hue uh, because it sweetens the broth and it also tenderizes the meat. I think this is our winner right here. Yeah. This is taro. This is what we're going to use for the, the dessert. And you basically have to boil and peel it and then smash it up. So I guess we need five pounds of this stuff. <laughs> Vietnamese cuisine uses a lot of um, sweeteners and this is the best form. It's yellow sugar but it's in rock form and it basically adds, you have the sweetness but it has more uh, deep sweetness to it. So this is a really crucial ingredient. I mean if you use this this stuff then it's not going to taste the same. When I was growing up my parents were constantly cooking and I took it for granted. I never realized how amazing the food memories that my parents created for me was until I moved to college and out of their home and once I was away, I realized how hard it is to find that quality, authentic Vietnamese food. And basically, I just like literally called my mom up every weekend and say, "How do you make this? How do you make that?" And I'm beginning to realize all like the techniques that she's been doing my entire life. Uh, I've been kind of absorbing, but it's finally to the point where I'm actually studying the ingredients that she's giving me and the recipes that she's getting, giving me. So that's why. I'm really obsessed with cooking now, just to recreate those memories that I had in childhood. And I think all good food, if you eat something really amazing, it will remind you of something that you had in the past. Voila. You could make this from scratch, but that would, I would probably need an extra day to do that. It's kind of like Italian cuisine, you know? There's a certain pasta type for different pasta dishes, so. This is the specific, it needs a round shape. It's almost like round spaghetti. It is the most popular from where my parents' hometown is. It's, they're from Hue, so this is the, the dish. Bung is noodles, so this is Bung. Bo is uh, cow, so that's cow, and then Hue is where it's from. Vietnamese, uh, before the French came, Viet Vietnamese never ate cow. And then we, just used, we had them to till our, our rice fields, and then uh, the French came, they're like, you should try out the cow, it's pretty tasty. And they're like, really? What do, what do we make out of it? And they were, the French were like, we have this thing called pâté feu, which is like beef with like wine and stuff like that. But Vietnam does not have a lot of wine, so we we're like, can we use fish sauce instead? And so we made it our fish sauce, and the ladies would carry uh, big bowls of this broth, yelling feu, but in the Vietnamese accent, it's pho, meaning fire. But that's where the name pho came from, and now that is the most famous dish of Vietnam. For a Vietnamese person, it will, a good bowl of bung bò hue would send them back to their mom's kitchen. And hopefully that's the case for the Vietnamese guests coming over uh, to the dinner party. So this is the master broth for the Bung Ba Hue. Uh, basically I simmered oxtail and a bunch of pork bones for 20 hours or so. And that basically gets this meaty flavor in it. And that's the crucial part. Hi, Hello, Megan. welcome. Nice to meet you. Wow, that's great. Master broth. I love making broths because it's a lot like making music. Oh, yeah. Like right? making a song, you have your bass track, you have your drum track. You have to fill all the notes in to make sure all like, the frequencies are there. And it's the same thing with making a broth. You have to have acidity, you have to have sweetness, you have to have um, you know, saltiness. Uh, and in Asian cuisine, we have the umami, which is like the meatiness flavor. So I got my broth to a certain point with just simmering meat, and now I'm just putting the finishing notes to it to, to fill out all the missing areas.
So the first course is called Pate Sho. It's like a Vietnamese meat patty. It has pork, mushrooms, and onions in it. And it's finger food, so just grab it and just help yourself. So please enjoy. Happy eating. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't be shy. So the next course is for very adventurous eaters. It's a Vietnamese delicacy, it's called Hot Vic Long, which basically inside this is a fertilized duck egg. I guess the smaller pointer end is down basically and the broader end is on top. Yeah. It's take your spoon and lightly tap and then peel it. As you're peeling it, you can see that there's a little membrane, right? <laughs> you peel it for a bit, and then you take the membrane and break it, like that, right? Mm -hmm. And basically what it reveals is a, a delicious duck soup, because the duck fetus is inside of it, and it's been broiling, I mean boiling and simmering for 30 minutes, so you basically have to take a shot of it, like so. <laughs> All right. All right. So, do the first move, and then we'll scoop up the duck fetus into your spoon. And just pop it right in. Wait, what? I do. Which is what you eat with the duck egg, that should go in as well. 
uh, some jalapenos if you want it spicy, and a really quintessential ingredient, which is really hard to find, and we have to go all the way up to Queens to get it, is banana flour. Oh my god. Yeah, what's that? My mom's version differs from others with this little chili paste. So if you want more lemon sourness and uh, spiciness, put that in. Ladies and gentlemen, our dessert course is finally upon us. So what we're going to have is uh, a taro-based creme brulee. Whoever wants coffee, we have uh, Vietnamese weasel coffee. In Vietnam, there's like a forest where it grows coffee beans, and weasels would eat the coffee bean whole, and the coffee bean would be intact as it goes through the entire digestive system, and it would be, you know, defecated out and little kids or whatever would pick it up and clean it out and for some reason something in the digestive system of the weasel changes the chemistry of the coffee beans making it more tastier so I actually brought back smuggled back some weasel coffee so you guys are more than welcome to try it if you want <laughs> so, uh, so we're gonna make some I'm still practicing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs>